so you can see it so it's make this the ship feel like it's on the water. So that's actually two little videos in the background. It's just Boy. I haven't felt these but... oh, It's called Real Pirates because it is the uh, exhibit that results from the excavation of the actually only authenticated pirate ship. So thousands of ships have shipwrecked, but this one is proven to be a pirate ship. This is one of my favorites. Uh, these are uh, bar shots or mangles, so they would have been shot from the cannons into the riggings of other ships to pull them down so that they couldn't maneuver and get out of the way. This pirate had plundered about 50 ships before he took the Widda, and so with all of the treasure from all of those journeys, he went down in a storm. Some of these coins date back to the 13th and 14th century. So amazing, amazing treasure. And it amazes me that this piece of silk has survived 300 years in salt water, but it would have been maybe in a concretion. The exhibit is great on its own, but we have added for spring break, we always do something for everybody that's free. So um, in Buccaneer Bay, they can dress like pirates and have their pictures taken beside some pirates and with a backdrop, so it's sort of a photo opportunity. They can dig in the sand for pirate treasure, although that is a fallacy. Pirates did not bury their treasure on islands. So here in these cases, we see not treasure and not weaponry, but just the everyday items that pirates had as part of their daily life. And so often history focuses on the special things, but not the mundane. And so this gives us sort of a really a, a good look at what their lives would have been like. People should come down during spring break because this, the exhibit is about to leave. And this is a world-class exhibit. You'd otherwise have to travel somewhere and go and see it somewhere else. But it's here in Winnipeg, so spring break is the best time to come. And if you can't come down during spring break to hang out with the pirates, make sure to check out Manitoba Museum's regular programming, which is always a great time. We're going to do that right now. Let's go make ice cream. Well, today we're going to be making liquid nitrogen ice cream, like the one that we make in our birthday parties at the museum. And uh, so first off, like all good ice cream, we need some milk and uh, sugar, of course. And our ice cream is going to be vanilla ice cream. Now, our ice cream's got all the right ingredients, but there's something missing, and that is not cold enough. And so to freeze it down properly, what I'm going to need is first we're going to need to put on our safety equipment. Okay. okay. Safety first. Because if we really wanted to freeze our ice cream properly, we could put it in a freezer, we could use a machine, but we figure the most fun way to do that is to use liquid nitrogen. And why is it smoke? What is this steam? The steam, smoke? the steam that's rising here? This is because the room is so warm, the great temperature difference uh, between the liquid nitrogen and the room temperature here is forcing it to boil. And as a rule, you don't usually like to mix science and food, but when it's ice cream, I can feel oh, we'll the cold ice. air coming out of this. Yeah. You can feel it. And there we have our ice cream. Ah. Well done. Yeah. So, uh, are you hungry? Always. Okay. It's never been an issue. <laughs> ice cream, too. So. All right. And I've got some sprinkles for you. Of course. And there we are. Just vanilla and sugar and milk. Mm. And it's actually really good. Mm. <laughs> Not like I doubted you about it. Mm. <laughs>